In this series, uh, we're going to use um, the ex LED example with the uh, X-Pro board. And basically, you press on a button and it lights up an LED and sends a, um, a serial message over the uh, virtual serial COM port. And uh, we'll use PuTTY and the visual uh, the visualizer both just to test out our output that's going to go through our... Uh, to the virtual COM port, and then later we'll uh, we'll set up an interrupt um, to when we press on the button, cause an interrupt and cause an LED to light up, and then maybe after that uh, do a SPI version. So um, so we'll start out. Um, we'll start out with a new project. And um, so I'll go to Atmel Studio. Then we'll select a new project. <coughs> Do the uh, GCC ASF uh, board project. I'll call, I'm going to call this CIRCOM. <coughs> YouTube. Then we're going to pick our board. Uh, so I'll select my board and I'll do a search. Uh, we the uh, X Pro. I'm using uses the same D21 chip microcontroller. Yeah, it's this one here. The AT Sam D21J18A is the uh, microcontroller on my board. So when we select that, it'll configure all the pins. So the clock generators, everything on the board, it'll have most of it configured for you. As far as all the input output pins um, or the pads or oscillators, etc. All right, so we go to main. Let me just give you a LED um, little bit of code here. I'm going to get rid of. We're going to put our own in. When we get to the interrupts, okay. So the example they set up um, uh, um, a string header, basically a string. And it just prints out to the uh, through the virtual COM port to a putty in our case or, or the visual visualizer um, a string getting started example, and then it'll draw the board name which is defined in your um, I think it's in the SAM D21 Explain Pro. So um, we can right click on that. Go see. It. Yeah, here it is. Here, it's just a defined statement um, with the board name. And then um, up here you have string end of line, so it's just a define with the uh, with a carriage return. This is all for formatting the string when it's sent out the putty, and uh, then another carriage return and a new line, and then um, it'll say it's the string compiled. And then here, which I didn't know before, but uh, if you're you, if you're using standard input output headers. You can use these macros, just put two um, underlines ahead and behind, and then capitalize the word date. And then uh, when this prints out to PuTTY, it'll show the actual date that's on your computer, and also the same thing with the time. The time, and then uh, another carriage return, a new line. And then uh, this is an explanation you know, from the example where you press the switch zero, and it makes the LED go on and off through an interrupt, which we'll do later. But right now we're just doing the CERCOM getting it when we get it working 
and set out to um, to the virtual com port. And um, also, um, when we go, we'll, I'm going to fire up the ASF wizard because we need to add the uh, Cericom um, USART um, so all the proper files are added so then we can um, call up the functions associated with USART. They're already built into ASF, but you got to make sure that they're, uh, you know, you're implemented through your wizard or through, I guess through the start page configurator you can too. But I use the wizard. So when I pick the board, it already um, initialized generic board support, the uh, port, um, general purpose input output pin controller drivers for, you know, setting up the, all the pins on the board. And, um, and then system core drivers, these are all like basic drivers setting up the clocks. And you can see the IO pin multiplexers for uh, the pads um, uh, on the board that um, they, they, they group like uh, USART modules together. And then you can uh, base freely uh, assign pads or pins, pads like a set of, th I think a set of four pins. And you can assign them to whatever module you want. It just, just allows more flexibility. Instead of having a dedicated pin to uh, to a USART, um, you can use it for different things, assign it different things to the multiplexer. <coughs> and uh, so these are the basics that we came with the board when I picked the board. So now we have to add CIRCOM uh, USART. And in this case, we're going to use CIRCOM USART. And we're going to use a, you can do polling or, or callback. We're going to use a, a callback. I guess they call an asynchronous callback. And um, so you click on that, you click add, it'll show up over here. Callback's checked, and then apply, and then it'll let load all the uh, proper files into your, um, into your, um, your project. A lot of times when you start typing in um, your functions and uh, and um, they're not being completed, um, it that gives you a clue that um, you don't have the right, you don't have the proper um, uh, drivers, you know, installed from the wizard or from the start page. Okay. Um, so we're going to keep referring back to the uh, to the example, and um, see here here we have a uh, standard input output um, serial header. We'll need for these macros here, so we got to make sure we include this. Just gonna copy and paste this. Okay, so basically I already explained this. All right, so what we have next is the um, Declaration of um, declaration of the two of structures. So we have to declare. Um, we have to create an instance of the USART module um, structure, and um, later on we'll do the timer 
counter module instance. In fact, I don't even think I even do that, but that's not part of this this video, anyways. But we do have to declare the uh, usert module. So. So I'm going to copy this. And this is um, a usert module type structure. And I'm just going to call this my. And then if you uh, will right click on this module, I think this is the hardware. So this structure is going to, uh, it retains the state of our uh, Cericom. If we go look at it, you've got a pointer to the uh, hardware instance of the Cericom. And um, it says here, um, that it's used to retain the software state information of an associated hardware module instance. And then the fields of the structure should not be altered by the user. Um, so we won't be altering it. They're just, they record the, the changes that we make. And the, the state, I think the state of the, uh, of the Cericom, if it's locked, if it's unlocked, if it's busy. And, it's, and uh, I think and they, when it's busy, it's locked up. And then when it's not busy, uh, it can be accessed. I, can't, I don't know a lot of details about this, but we don't really have to mess with it. Okay, so we have that instance. We're going to ignore this. Not part of the Cericom. Now we've got to make uh, our own um, uh, function. And this function's. Uh, Basically, going to um, uh, sign a bunch of defaults to our Cericom and um, our Cericom structure. It'll going to sign defaults to it, and then we're going to modify some of the defaults uh, by assign assigning uh, pads um, to transmission and receive. And uh, some pads are unused, and then um, also uh, we assign the baud rate that we'll be using. Um, so first, so so we got to first uh, create a this function call it, call it what you want. Um, let's see, I'll call. A, I'll do a prototype here. On my configure console, no uh, no returns, no uh, no parameters. I'll copy this, paste. All right, so in the example program, um, first thing they do uh, inside the function is create an instance of the uh, usart config um, structure. So let's do that, and then we'll take a look at it. Now, when Visual Studio doesn't um, do your uh, completion, completing your uh, code completion, whatever they call it, uh, that's a good sign that you uh, haven't assigned, you know, through the wizard, you haven't assigned uh, assigned one of those um, drivers. Um, so if this stuff's not showing up, go back and assign the uh, the driver that this, you know, like this in this case, the Cericom, um driver that we applied.